Hello, this is a worksheet to understand some real problems like thinking and communication questions which are asked in the test to understand those problems. Okay, now the first one here is what type of discontinuities can you expect in a rational function? As you know, rational functions have restrictions, their denominator cannot be zero and that leads to discontinuities. So we'll discuss the type of discontinuities rational functions can have. Well, the simplest of the rational function is reciprocal function, right? So we have fx equals to 1 over x. This is the simplest rational function. If you see the graph of this function, then what do you see? You see a discontinuity at the origin. So we have horizontal asymptote and the vertical asymptote. x is not equal to 0, right? x cannot be equal to 0. So as you approach 0 from negative side, you approach negative infinity, a very large negative value. And as you approach 0 from the positive side, you approach positive infinity, a very large positive number. Now. So there is a discontinuity in between. You can never be at zero. So that is what the discontinuity is. And this kind of a discontinuity is called vertical asymptote. So how do we get it? If denominator is equal to zero, then we can never reach that point at when it is zero. So we approach infinity, unbound increase of our function, and we call that as vertical asymptote. So this is one kind of discontinuity which you can expect in a rational function. So even if I have a function like this, let me write gx equals to x plus 2 over x minus 1. Here also, we cannot approach this time 1. So what do you expect? You expect a vertical asymptote at x equals to 1. So whenever you can equate denominator to 0, then the values which can be calculated for x will lead to vertical asymptote. Well, there are some exceptions to this rule. Now, let's consider another function, hx. And this function, let's say, x plus 1 times x minus 1 over, let's say, x minus 1. So here what we see is that the restriction is that x cannot be 1. So we cannot approach 1. So we expect a vertical asymptote. But really we don't get a vertical asymptote here. Why? Because it has a common factor and this x minus 1 gets cancelled off. And we get x plus 1 where x is not equal to 1. So this is what we get. So this rational function does have a restriction that x is not equal to 1. But since we had a common factor in the numerator and denominator, they cancelled out. That led to not a vertical asymptote, but a different kind of discontinuity and we call that a hole. And now I will show you, if you sketch a graph of this function, it is a line, right? x plus 1, slope 1, y-intercept of 1. So it will be a line like this, correct? Let me just first draw a line here and then I'll tell you why I made it like this. But discontinuity is that at 1, let's say this is 1 for us, the value should normally be 2. But here it cannot be at 1. So we have a hole here. So basically the line is kind of like this. Do you see that? And this discontinuity here is called whole. So if we have a common factor, in that case we don't have a vertical asymptote, but we have a whole. And this is the second type of discontinuity which we can expect in our rational function. So effectively, x plus 1 times x minus 1 divided by x minus 1 will graph as x plus 1, but with a whole at x equals to 1. Do you understand? Like this. So there are two types of discontinuities which we can expect in a rational function. One, 
is a vertical asymptote, the other is a hole. You get a hole when denominator is zero, and but we do have a similar factor in the numerator which cancels out. So that vertical asymptote which we were expecting is not there, but a hole is there instead. Do you get it? Okay, great. Now let's look into the next question. It says, with the definition of rational function, a rational function is defined as rx equals to px over qx, where qx is not equal to zero. Perfect. Will every rational function have restrictions in its domain? What I'm trying to say is, qx is not equal to zero, but is it possible to have some rational functions where qx cannot be zero and therefore will never have any restrictions? Think about it. I think there are few. Let's look into this function here. fx equals to 2x minus 1 over x squared plus 1. So it is a rational function. Why? It's a polynomial 2x minus 1 divided by another polynomial x square plus 1. Now we say this cannot be 1. So let's write down our restriction. x square plus 1 is not equal to 0. That means x square is not equal to negative 1. Square is always positive. You can never get any value which will be negative 1. Or I can even write this. x is not equal to plus minus square root of minus 1. You know, square root of minus 1 is not real, right? So, there is no restriction on this particular rational function. So, in case the denominator is never zero, then we will never have a restriction. Correct? So, there are many rational functions which may not have any restriction in their domain. So, their domain will be all real numbers. Reason being, their denominator is never zero, like we have in this particular example. Do you get it? Correct. Let's move on to another question. Question number three is consider the following simplification. Let's say we have this rational function y equals to x squared minus 4 divided by x plus 2. This is difference of squares and therefore you can factor it like x plus 2 times x minus 2. In the denominator we have x plus 2. Correct? Now we have factors in numerator and denominator which can be cancelled out. Once we do that, we are left with, oh sorry, I should have cancelled out this one. This is correct. Yeah. So we are left with x minus 2. Is it right? Now the question is, is this function equal to that? What I'm trying to say, are these equal? Well, we simplified and we found that yes, they are equal. But are they really equal? That is the question. Correct? Let's call this function as fx. Let's say this is fx equals to x square minus 4 over x plus 2. And let's say this is gx, which is equals to x minus 2. Now, we simplified as you saw here, right? How did we simplify? Difference of squares is x plus 2 times x minus 2 divided by x plus 2. And we cancel these left with x minus 2, correct? So this is equal to x minus 2. Are they really equal? That is the question. What do you think? Well, they are not really equal. If I give you separately gx as x minus 2 and fx as this, then you know the difference? There is one huge difference. And the difference here is, if you sketch this graph, what will you get? x minus 2. If I sketch this graph, I will get a straight line with minus 2 y intercept and x value like this. But in this straight line, what is the restriction? That x is not equal to minus 2. This rational function has a restriction that x is not equal to minus 2. But this rational function does not have that restriction. So at minus 2, let's say this is our minus 2, we have a hole here. Do you understand? So this hole is therefore, this hole is for fx. 
and not for gx. In case of gx, if I draw this graph, then what will I get? I will get a straight line solid without hole. So this is our gx. Do you see the difference between fx and gx? fx will be a line similar to x minus 2, exactly same except for one particular difference, that is a hole at minus 2. Why did we get this hole? Because there was a common factor in numerator and denominator which got cancelled and once it does, it leads to a hole. Therefore, this expression may simplify to x minus 2, but it is not exactly same until and unless we write this as x not equal to minus 2. So now, if I write like this, then yes, both are exactly same. Otherwise, not. Okay? Thank you.